This is Torsten from AbletonLive.Ninja, and we are continuing with our part two of the iRig Pads Editor Exploration Extravaganza. More specifically, we're making all of the buttons and knobs do different things than they were originally programmed to do with this program so that we can control Ableton Live in a very unique, very powerful way for a live performance in a venue. So let's get started. We wanted to make this knob, when turned, change the crossfader in Ableton Live. To do that, we need to obviously select the knob, but notice when I click the knob itself, it's selecting the button when pressed as opposed to the knob when turned. So you need to click above and make sure that this is selected so that I can control a knob, not a button. And on the left-hand side here, we have a selector so I can select between the three knobs and under that I actually have the assign uh, the assign information so I can change what that knob does so make sure you have data selected control change is what we want we're not changing a program a program change command would be for example in a synthesizer if I wanted to switch from one patch to another we'd use a program change in this case we're controlling something so we're going to use the control change command this entire video will use only MIDI channel 1 because I don't want to make things more convoluted than necessary for those of you who might be new to MIDI altogether so we are going to use a control command that is inherently a knob based command so for example balance or in the case of this knob we've got pan those are things dedicated or that are that are generally sent to either a fader or a knob and that's going to give me the control I want. I also want to make sure that absolute is selected, not relative. And here's why. I'm going to select relative and show you all the, show you all the nonsense we get if I try to use uh, relative. So I am going, I dove straight in. If you have no idea what's going on, again, I'm going at a rocket speed. So I'm clicking MIDI. I'm going to map. Uh, by clicking here and turning the knob, I now have that knob mapped. Exit MIDI mode by either clicking or Command M or Control M if you're on the PC. But now, when I turn the knob, it's instantly snapping back and forth from one side to the next. Because I have transfer set to auto send configuration, I can simply select the knob, change it back to absolute, and it's fixed. Hooray. So there you go. Let's, uh, let's put this all the way to the left-hand side so that when I map my next parameter, you don't go deaf when I launch the scene. I'm going to stop all of the clips so that, uh, so that we can see that this is going to work. I also said that when I press this knob like a button, I wanted it to launch whatever scene was selected. So in this case, this would be scene four or scene one. To do this, imagine that. I'm going to click MIDI, come down here, and notice that a few other options appeared when I clicked that, one of which being this play button. I click the play button, which of course is the scene launch button. Click the button on your uh, iRig. Exit MIDI. And now, whenever I have a scene selected, it launched that scene. It is actually playing. I have the crossfader all the way to the left so that it would not play through the speakers. I now want to toggle up and down, not toggle, I want to, I want to move up and down uh, using these two buttons, up and down through the scenes. It's very simple, I click MIDI, there's an up arrow, I'm going to sign that to number one, a down arrow, I'm going to sign that to number two, exit, and it works. Beautiful. So we now have three things mapped, I've got my fader, my crossfader here, I now have the ability to launch a scene, and this time we actually heard something. I can move up and down, I can launch a different scene, and it acts exactly like the, uh, it acts exactly like if you were to hit enter, it's going to move to the next scene every time you launch that scene. Great. From here, I have a whole bunch of things that I want to do um, in terms of the pads. But before I do, I, I want to highlight something that is inherent to all of the buttons, and that is this mode where it says temporary or toggle. Thus far, I've ignored the fact that they are on temporary. I'm leaving these at temporary, and you'll understand why when I switch to toggle for these four. So let's get to these four next. 
and these are going to be for channel one the high cut and the low cut for channel two the high cut and the low cut and notice that when i click this one this is a note as opposed to a control uh, a cc a, a control change command and i did that to show you that you can in fact use notes to map to any parameter that's a button related parameter but there's a few things that you should know about that for instance if you were to try to play d sharp 2 ever after this if it is mapped to something else it will be ignored by the instruments because it's serving a different function so if you want something to stay musical you probably should if you if you want part of your irig to stay musical for the sake of being consistent i would change anything that is controlling a parameter to a control command and anything that is supposed to be musical inherently musical you're going to leave that as a note in this case i'm going to make a mistake again on purpose to show you uh, why this can be a problem even more than just i lose that note specifically so i said that this would be uh, that 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 pad would be my high uh, my high would kill my highs <laughs> and I am going to uh, be able to click this button and I want it to be a toggle which means when I press the button it turns red and it stays red even when I release my hand and that indicates that the parameter is on I press it again and release and it turns it off so it's it's not going to instantaneously lose the color when I release the pad just like this button if I click it it goes away if I click it again, it comes back. My mouse is pressing down and releasing, pressing down and releasing. That's the, that's the idea, that's what I want it to do. So I'm going to map it, but we'll find that it does something kind of interesting. Now, I'm, I, on, you can't see this obviously, but on my iRig, the pad is now red. If I press, the pad is now off. Nothing happened. If I press again, the pad turned red, but it turned this off. Press again, the pad turns off. Press again, the pad turns red again and turns back on. Now this is this is what is happening. It's sending note on off information and it's sending the note on every single time the red pad is illuminated, which is great. But this isn't responding to any sort of note off information. So what I want to do is I want to change this from a note to a control command. This is very important for this type of workflow. I'm going to leave it as a toggle and I want to make sure that I'm not interfering with any of the other control commands. So I've got 16 here, 17, 18, 19. That's perfect. So let's just map these to their corresponding functions. So this one will be the high cut. This will be the low cut for channel one, high cut, low cut for channel two. So that you know what I'm clicking as I do it. We're in channel one. I'm going to switch the mapping mode on and I'm going to click here. Notice I didn't have to delete. I just click the parameter and press the button. So now I have these two mapped. Let's move to the next track. These two are now mapped. Excellent. I'm going to leave the map mode and now when I turn the parameter on and off, the button is now, or the pad is now red on the iRig. It's now not illuminated. On, off. Great. And the same goes, just to be sure. These are also working. Always check your work, just in case. So these are working, but these knobs I want to control both of the frequency, the, the crossover frequency for the lows and the crossover frequency for the highs. Now here's what I've done here. Uh, instead of controlling the low frequency directly, I have it mapped to a macro because the low frequency, when in its far right position, goes all the way to 6K, which is really high. So I, instead of just rolling off some of the lows so that the kick drum is less emphatic, I'm almost erasing the track. We just hear a little sizzle. So what I've done is I've mapped this and if you go into map mode and you open up your browser, you can see the browser disappears and wow, you have all of these cool parameters. 
I selected here and I said, well, I want the lowest to be 50 hertz, but I only want the highest to be 300 as opposed to 6K, obviously. So let's close. Actually, we'll leave the browser open because we'll need it. We'll need it in a little bit. We'll leave map mode. So I'm going to map my knob to this. So when it's in its full uh, far right hand position, uh, I'm killing the lows, but it's mostly just the low end of that kick. And when this is in the far left hand position, I'm killing the highs, but the mids and lows are still maintained. Great. So we make sure that these control commands are unique, which they are, and we map away. Click map. We're going to click track one. This is the low one, so I'm doing the knob two. This is the highs, so I'm doing knob one. Switch to track two, and this is where things get really cool. I can control them both at the same time. That's knob two again, and there's knob one again. Let's leave and make sure it worked. So here I'm in track two. I'm gonna turn the low knob. See, it's controlling this, which is in turn controlling that. So now the lows would not be influenced. Now the lows would be influenced. Same with the highs, there's working. Let's move to track one, and that is working as well. Fantastic. All right, so we will move on, and we will come back. Uh, we'll move on in the next video to show you how the rest of this is mapped. Again, this is Torsten from AbletonLive.Ninja. Hope you are enjoying part two, soon to be part three, of our iPads editor, iRigPads editor exploration.